Matt and I have the inside scoop on who are the must-draft hitters that you need in your upcoming fantasy baseball drafts this weekend on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. You can find me on Twitter at DomMartinoFB. Here, as always, with my brother, my co-host, my partner in crime, Matthew Arne, and you can find him on Twitter at Matthew underscore Arne. If you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly, truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. And guess what? If you do decide to do that, give us that five-star rating and review, you might as well take a screenshot of it and join us over on the subtext platform, where you can send us over that screenshot to join our, or have a chance to join our coveted listener league for this upcoming season. And guys, Matt, where I believe we're going to be in announcing it tomorrow as the, the fans are listening to this our last four spots get those final entries in like i said four more spots and that's all um and guys if you're watching on youtube and you haven't already hit that little bell below it subscribes to the channel and gives you notification every time we drop a new episode and real quick today's episode is brought to you by prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on mlb and use the code in all lowercase locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to $100. And guys, today's episode is a very, very important one. These are the bats that you have to walk away from your draft with. Um, You know, you're drafting this week. This weekend is the biggest draft weekend um, in fantasy baseball uh, this, you know, the season. Uh, So, Matt, who do we got at first? Who are we talking about, brother? All right. I mean, why don't we just, you know, Drop it like it's hot and start off with a hot name here. Everybody, some everybody's questioning: Should I draft him? When should I draft him? And that's Wyatt Langford. Uh, Wyatt Langford is absolutely just mashing it, making sure that he's going to make um, the uh, starting roster. Um, we call it. So, I mean, ultimately, it's it's a yes. You must draft him. You must draft him everywhere. He's having probably one of the most monstrous springs I've ever seen. Um, 42 at bats, 11 runs, nine singles, two doubles, five bombs, 16 ribs, five walks to 12 strikeouts, and he's batting a lovely 381. Wyatt Langford has all the power in the world that I think that is just going to translate pretty quickly. Um, it's just really just a matter of okay, how much playing time is he going to get? What's the path for him to be able to, you know, sustain everyday play and you know, who's going to be able to stop him from doing that. Uh, Right now, I don't see, I don't see how he doesn't play truthfully. You know, Dom, correct me if I'm wrong. What it's Evan Carter, Adolis, and I can't think of the third outfielder there, but. Um, Okay. So right now, roster resource has Langford projected as the DH and they have Lavodi, uh, Leody Tavares playing center field. Okay. So like, that's the thing there. And, Right now, uh, the the reason the other part of this was, yeah, he needs to earn that outfield spot, but also too when Co- uh, Corey Seager comes back, probably some point next week. I mean, some point during the season, which should be early. That's where like he's going to lose that DH availability as much, and they're going to obviously get Seager in that lineup more than they get Langford, unless Langford just seriously outplays everybody else. Because Seager, I don't think is going to play the field right off the bat. So that's ultimately what's going to stop him. But I still think he's worth the draft pick because, quite honestly, he's going to literally just go full send and be like, yeah, I'm here and I'm not leaving. Make room for me type deal. So ultimately, why Langford should have everyday play. I don't know if you agree with me, Dom. Oh, I'm, I'm totally with you. I mean, just look at the spring training numbers. 15 games for Langford this spring, 42 at-bats, 11 runs, 2 doubles, 5 homers, 16 RBIs, 381 batting average. Five walks to 12 strikeouts is an atrocious. You know, in today's day and age, that'll get it done. This kid's done everything to earn the spot. Give it to him. And then, uh, you know, I mentioned that, you know, roster resource has him in the starting lineup. I didn't mention where they have him hitting. They have him hitting third. Like, I think just 
Wyatt Langford's to the moon at this point. He's going inside the top 100. I think right now, if you can get him as your third outfielder and probably most situations you can't, but if you can get him as your third outfielder, you're probably going to walk away very happy. The young Wyatt Langford's an absolute stud. Um, I could see a 30 ish home run season with 15 steals and a 280 batting average and very good counting stats in that, you know, Rangers lineup. So, like I said, white line for to the moon. <laughs> but let's move on to another, you know, top prospect that has been absolutely raking in spring training as well. Let's talk about Jackson Holiday. I feel like we've talked about Jackson Holiday a lot more on this podcast than Langford, but, you know, um, uh, deservingly so for the young Holiday. Also having himself a, a strong spring training with 13 games, 40 at-bats, four runs, three doubles, two triples, a homer, five RBIs, two steals, uh, and hitting 300. So, you know, another five-tool guy in Jackson Holiday. Um, I think Roster Resource also has him. Uh, last time I checked, I believe they had him in the lineup. I'm just going to double-check that right now. Another guy, just put him in the opening day lineup. There's so much incentive to, for teams to do it, um, you know, draft pick compensation and all that. Yeah, right now, Roster Resource has Jackson Holiday playing second base, batting eighth. Imagine this guy picks up second base eligibility, you know, position that's a little bit tougher to fill. Uh, just get, you know, um, Jackson Holiday everywhere. He's someone, his ADP hasn't risen as much as Langford's has, uh, so there's a little bit of room to make profit up Holiday they still but um definitely just take them as uh, any way you can get them yeah for sure i mean jackson holiday is going to be just a monster uh it's just i i don't know what it's going to look like in terms of like this season the one thing i will say is i think it's gonna look more like a a bobby witt jr rookie season where we see potential and he does take have a nice season but it's not like full send where you know he's the best player best best prospect to step up in a while like corbin garrell did uh i think it does take Jackson Holiday a little bit more time, but he's definitely a must draft. Draft price is right, and that second base eligibility just makes him more and more of a sexier pick. So, yeah, let's move on here. Let's sneak another guy in before we go to an ad break. Let's talk about Christian Encarnacion Strand, another young guy. This is going to be a very young episode, funny enough. But, uh, you know, ultimately half the guys on here can't even buy themselves a beer. But uh, <laughs> Strand here, I was, wasn't was sure if he was going to be on, like, a must draft episode, but, like, you know, now with Marte going down, uh, uh, going down to suspension because he just loves to put needles in his rump, and with um, Friedel also having some time out of the lineup, there's a lot of open space for him to play now. Um, Strand is going to have some DH time. He's going to have first base time. They're going to be able to do things now. They're going to have a little bit more flexibility and have everyday play and Christian on Canosi on stream. Once he gets started, I don't think it's going to stop. He's having a really nice spring, you know, with 34 at bats, nine runs, three singles, three triples, three bombs, 10 ribs, four strikeouts. And he's batting a lovely 265, which I think that's pretty much what it's going to look like all year for him. I think is the 265 batting average um, might get a little bit better, but we'll see the plate discipline is something that isn't really there for him, but you know, it is what it is. Encarnacion Strand is just going to be a dude that I think is going to have a really nice season. Uh, 35 home run upside, obviously in that, um, with that rotate, with that, with that lineup, plenty of runs and ribby opportunity with, with uh, Ellie and Steer and Caminaro and everybody else. It's just going to be really nice to Strand. And it's, it's going to be a monster pick. And I love the draft price too. So Encarnacion Strand is a must draft. Yeah, Matt, real quick, before I uh, give jump in and give my take on Strand, and, you know, I got a, a somebody who just went over to the Dodgers that I absolutely love, taking them everywhere. I mean, we have some more young talent, but um, before we do that, we're going to hit you with a quick ad break. All right, and we got Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less than two to six players, stat projections, and watch the winnings roll in. Exploring my skills on prize picks this season adds an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. With just a few taps, you could transform $10 into $1,000. Prize picks is incredibly user friendly. You can make selections and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. As a host of Locked On Fantasy Baseball, I got some great picks for you. Offer higher than five strikeouts in a single game for Logan Webb. Uh, you know, go higher than 0.5 steals in a single game for Ellie De La Cruz. 
and honestly, even a, a season long uh, pick of higher than 50 stolen bases for Bobby Witt Jr. Download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It is that easy. And guys, Locked On has launched its first ever national 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you covering. 24 7 covering the top stories of the day of your local expert from your local experts and locked on plus plus our national shows covering every league go to locked on sports today and on youtube and subscribe to the first ever national 24 7 streaming channel also guys and more importantly we mentioned at the top of the show just a brief minute we're introducing the locked on fantasy baseball podcast diamond club on subtext your ultimate fantasy baseball companion dive into this offseason with diamond eyes we provide you with tier based rankings of over 100 outfielders and 100 starting pitchers ranked you'll also have exclusive access to our prospect uh, insight sleepers breakouts bust personalized draft grades and when you got the pertinent questions we've got the answers as the season unfolds, rely on our dynamic content and get real-time alerts right to your phone, including wave wire rankings, instant call-up notifications, injury reactions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where your path to victory begins. Subscribe now and elevate that fantasy baseball experience to new levels. Plus, since you're going to go join this because you need this to win your leagues and you know have a great starting point for your season this weekend, you're going to want to just give us an, a review on Apple and send us that DM uh, right to our... Uh, Right to our, our chat in the in the subtext, and it'll get you an entry in before Wednesday, and then you could be in the listener league. So you don't want to miss out on that. But all right, Don, I'm going to turn it over to you. Finish your take on that, and uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. So let's jump back in. I'll give a quick little take on Strand. But Matt did a great job covering him. Um, Strand is somebody I'm big on right now. The ADP is looking great on Strand. Uh, the 18th first baseman pick 136 overall. A lot of room to profit there. It doesn't really steal any bases, but kind of reminds me of an Adrian Beltre almost um, in the. I'm sorry, guys. I, I got sidetracked there for a second. Yeah, but no, but Adrian Beltre, I think, is a great comp there uh, for uh, a young Christian Encarnacion, um, Encarnacion strand. I really like what he brings to the table, uh, especially I think he's going to hit the middle of that red lineup. I think uh, he's going to be, um, you know, a, a stud there. But Matt, you, you covered him pretty well, so I'm just going to move on to this next guy here. Uh, let's move on to Teoscar Hernandez. Teoscar Hernandez is somebody that I think there's so much room to profit off of, right? Uh, with Teoscar going over to the Dodgers, he's going to hit, you know, uh, somewhere in the middle of that lineup. I want to see where Roster Resource has him penciled in. But, uh, you know, there's room to improve on the counting stats. There's especially room to uh, for Teoscar to improve on the steals. Uh, somebody who has stolen a decent amount of bags in the past, he's actually super fast. Uh, I don't know if it was a, a thing in Seattle where they were just holding him back, but honestly, I could see him getting over double-digit steals again. Uh, I know we talked about the 30-15 upside for Langford. I think that same upside uh, is there for a Teoscar. And honestly, the batting average is something that that's decent as well. He's not going to kill you in batting average. Uh, career 261 guy. I think he could hit around that as well. So you're talking about a guy that you know can contribute in almost every single category, at least a little something, something. And right now, Teoscar is coming off the board at a pretty solid price at the 27th outfielder, pick 109. So you're getting him as a high end outfielder three. I absolutely love it. Yeah, no, I, I I love everything you're saying. Um, you know, I think he's going to fit in just not, just right there. You're not even just buying what he could possibly do. You're buying the team around him and how he's going to benefit from them. And he's having a great spring, so I don't see any any path where it doesn't lead to him being successful and being very valuable and contributing week in and week out. So Teoscar Hernandez is a must draft and a great great take, Dom. Um, I don't really have much to say on that, honestly. Let's move on. Uh, let's talk about Jackson Cheerio. Jackson Cheerio, guy that got paid right before the season and honestly looks like he's going to go and, you know, break camp, obviously, and keep it going. Spring is pretty decent. 46 at, bait, at bats, <laughs> eight runs, 10 singles, three doubles, uh, three ribs, you know, two walks to 10 strikeouts is a little concerning. No stolen bases yet. Batting 283, though. So, you know, with Cheerio right now, I don't know if his – playing is indicative of what we could possibly see this season you know maybe we're just having a, a little bit of a slow start to to the campaign here but ultimately i think 
you know, he's going to back out, be- uh, do his thing because he is one of those dudes that's just going to be great. There's a reason why they decided to go ahead and, and pay him, you know, before the season even started to make sure that he's just going to be good and he's locked in, ready to go. And that's just based off the fact the kid has talent out the, out the wazoo. You know, you look at what he's done in his minor league career and you're just like, okay, this really makes sense. And why we're talking about him today is last year he had 531 at bats. He had 88 runs. He had 20 double, 26 doubles, three triples, 22 bombs, 91 ribs, 44 stolen bases, batted 283. You know, power, I think, is going to be there. I think there is another level, but I don't know if it's this year. I think, again, this kind of looks like a Bobby Witt Jr. season with more stolen bases in his rookie year because the dude's super fast. And I just think we're going to get a lot out of him. And the draft price isn't atrocious either. He's not being overly priced right now. So I'm not really disappointed in what that's looking like. I'm actually going to pull that up real quick. Um, I got it for you, brother. 33rd yeah. outfielder, pick 136. So, yeah, like that's a fair price for him, truthfully. Like, I mean, who's who's getting mad at being able to wait a little bit and bolster up at other positions, still be able to go get a solid outfielder three? So for me, Cheerio is a no-brainer. Love Churio, Matt. And honestly, I, I love the the specific part of your take where you talked about might not be the power this year, but we'll for sure see the speed. So worst case scenario, you're getting a guy that I think I think may, it might take a month or two, but I think Churio will eventually be hitting leadoff for this Brewers team. So I think the runs, the steals, and the batting average are things you can definitely count on. If he gives you some runs in our uh, homers and RBIs as well, that's just going to be gravy on top. And as I said, as your outfielder three, you can't go wrong. But it's so funny, Matt. I don't. I don't think we could have actually set this up any better. But uh, going one pick ahead of him and one outfielder slot ahead of him is Marcelo Zuna from the <laughs> Braves. Uh, I love Marcelo Zuna. I don't. I really don't understand why he's being so undervalued this year. I know he's going to be thirty three. But last year, Ozuna in 144 games, 530 at bats. He had 84 runs, 29 doubles, 40 homers, 100 RBIs, 57 walks, 234 strikeouts, and he hit 274. He he he's he. We know who he is. He, the batting average is going to be decent, around a 270 where he hits for his career. He has 40 homer upside, which he showed last year. Don't know if he hits 40 again, but 35 plus certainly. Uh, in that Braves lineup, 84 runs and 100 RBIs. There's that's super super repeatable. So, like I said, I feel like we know who he is. He's just being undervalued. You're honestly getting outfielder number two production at pick 135, 32nd outfielder off the board. Gotta love it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Ozuna is somebody that honestly is like a forgotten child. You know, it, only people that really like into him are actually drafting him. And I could totally see a path again for him to be a week in and week out contributor. And Dom really broke it down nicely. So I don't think I need to do anything about it. I do want to keep moving on, though, and see if I can sneak in another guy before this break. And that's Henry Davis here. Henry Davis is somebody that I feel like is somebody we really do need to talk about. Uh, Davis is having a monster spring and we, we need to talk about the implications of what it's going to look like for fantasy. So right now he only has outfield eligibility, but he only needs to play. I think what five games on Yahoo and 15 on everywhere else, uh, a catcher, a, a, a catcher. And he instantly becomes, you know, a high end catching, catching player, I guess is how we're going to put this. You know, this spring is really indicative of, of what we could possibly see. 32 at-bats, he's had six runs, three singles, two doubles, four bombs, 11 ribs, four white walks to nine strikeouts, love that. And he's batting 361. Henry Davis can be a serious threat to uh, just not being out there in general and be a serious advantage to you if you're able to get him as your, as your catcher. Like, it's just going to be a lot of fun owning him this year. And if you don't know who he is, obviously he plays for Pittsburgh. Last year, he had 196 at-bats in the minors. He had 32 runs. He had 10 doubles, two triples, 12 bombs, 32 ribs, 10 stolen bases, and he batted 306. You know, what he did in the in the bigs last year, I think, was just him getting adjusted to, you know, to the big league talent and things like that. And this year, I feel he's coming in with a new approach, and he's really taking the league by storm. I think what we're seeing now is actually legitimate. So, again, before I let Tom take over and, you know, Give his take. We do have a great sponsor to talk about, but you're going to be looking out for guys like Christopher Morell and Mitch Garver and Jordan Westberg as the as we end the show.
and guys were talking about Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that already provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to make sure you have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date in all of the latest in the world of sports, including March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and all Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. You got to trust me on that one. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. Once again, that's Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV to get started today. And all right, guys, uh, I'll, I'll give my little two cents on Henry Davis. Uh, you know, the proof is, is in the pudding here. Guy was the number one, you know, overall pick for a reason. Back in 2021, Pirates took him 1-1, you know, first overall. Uh, absolutely loved, you know, everything I've seen from Henry Davis. Had a little bit of, you no know, showing last year uh, in the bigs. Only hit 213, but you know what? He did show off, Um, you know, seven homers and three steals. So, uh, you know, I loved seeing that from him. He also walked a little bit too with 25 walks to, you know, uh, 69 strikeouts as, you know, 23-year-old first taste of the bigs uh, showed out pretty well. And, and he's pretty much free right now. Henry Davis coming off the board has picked 291. That's the 71st outfielder. Really should be drafting him to stash him for when he gets that catcher eligibility, uh, as Matt mentioned. But I really do love me some Henry Davis, uh, you know, coming into this year. Uh, let's move on to, I feel like, another hidden gem. Let's talk about Christopher Morell. Uh, Christopher Morell came up last year and was absolutely just just raking, right? Uh, was was great for the power, but he's also got some speed. Uh, has second base eligibility on Yahoo. I'm not sure if he retained it everywhere. I think he did. Uh, you know, you guys could fact check me on that one, but I'm pretty sure he did retain it everywhere. Uh, and, and it's a great power speed combo on a good team. A uh, young guy in Morel coming off the board, pick 182. That is the 46th uh, outfielder. Uh, I, I I love Morel this year. Honestly, I think it could be a breakout year for the kid. Honestly, wouldn't be shocked if he had 35 plus homers. Good RBI total, chipped in 15 steals. Batting average and runs might not be fantastic. Kind of depends where he's going to hit in that Cubs lineup. But, you know, 240 batting average. Uh, Max Muncy with a little bit of speed, maybe. Will Christopher Morell, absolutely love him. Taking him everywhere, especially at that value. Pick 182 is crazy. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we just had our draft this weekend. I scooped him up. I mean, Christopher Morell is just fantastic. Swiss Army knife. That is a must draft. Um, you know, if you're leaving your draft with Adam, especially at the price, I think you're doing yourself a disservice because, I mean, this kid's about to have not only just a breakout season, but I think he's about to really just moonshot and you can't beat the value. So let, let's just not forget about him at all and kind of just put him in instantly in the queue. But yeah, let's move on here. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Mr. Christopher, uh, Mr. Jordan uh, Westberg. Here. <laughs> it's one of those days, guys. We drank very heavily during our draft on Saturday, so I'm still feeling oh, yes, it. Sir. This yes, is what sir. happens. This is what happens when you cross 30 threshold. It's just miserable. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not fun anymore. No, I mean it's still fun. I just pay for it for a couple days. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's keep it moving here. Let's talk about Jordan Westberg. Uh, you know, my guy has second base eligibility and whatnot. I'm look, I'm loving what he's gonna do for us uh as a fantasy for his fantasy outlook, right? So this spring he has 39 at bats, he has eight runs. Four singles, three doubles, a triple, two bombs, six ribs. Uh, you know, struck out a little bit, but still batting about 256. Westberg is somebody that was a number one prospect at one point um, during the season before his call up. And rightfully so. I mean, last year in the minors, he had 260 at bats. He had 57 runs. He had 15 doubles, two triples, 18 bombs in that short period of time, 54 ribs, six stolen bases, and batting 295. You know, he has a lot of upside. He has the power because the 22, he had 27 home runs. 
You know, he has a little bit of potential to chip in anywhere from 15 to 20 stolen bases. You know, we call it batting. Um, we call it plate discipline is pretty good too. He walks about half the half half the amount to his strikeouts. So like Westberg really could pose a threat to do you like really contribute. And people are kind of just like forgetting about him in all honesty. So like I'm I'm seriously out there saying yo grab him. He's free right 99 right now too. 357. Uh, you know, honestly, like, do not overlook him. Scoop him up if you can. If he's on your waiver wire, you really don't want to miss out on it because when he goes to break out right after the week one um, and, you know, we see a couple days of play, it's going to be really, really tough to go and get him. So if you drafted already, pick him up. If, you, if you're going in the draft week, make him your last pick of the draft. Yeah, Matt, I like Westberg as well. Um, roster resource has him penciled in to hit ninth and, you know, play third base for the Baltimore Orioles. So, you know what, the run should look pretty good. Has a little bit of power and speed, as you mentioned. Uh, I do like the upside, not that pricey. You really can't go wrong there. Uh, but let's move on to the last guy in today's episode. Somebody I love, somebody I feel like I've talked about way too much, and it's Mitch Garver. <laughs> you know, I, I love Mitch Garver and just the value is just absolutely amazing for a guy who's not even really going to play much catcher. He might play here here and there just to spell Cal Raleigh. But you know what? Uh, a guy who's going to DH pretty much almost every other day, the 13th catcher off the board, pick 205. Uh, Mitch Garver's got a lot, a lot of power in that bat. So you're talking about, you know, good amount of power. Should RBI should be good. And honestly, uh, Mitch Garver's always hit for a pretty decent batting average as well. So, you know, what's not to like? Spring training for Mitch Garver. Oh, just doing more of the same 11 games, 26 at-bats, five runs. Three doubles, two homers, 10 RBIs, and hitting 346. Uh, and then, you know, last year, Mitch Garver with the World Series Championship, uh, Texas Rangers hit 270, 44 walks to 82 strikeouts. So even in those points leagues, he's helping you 19 homers, 50 RBIs. I, I just love me some Mitch Garver. I'll just get him everywhere you can. After pick 200, you know, out going outside of the top 12 catchers, you could wait and then, you know, be stacked everywhere else and still get Mitch Garver. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I see the path. I see everything about it. I like the potential. I just want to see him really just do it is really all it is. Um, we'll see. Um, this is more of a you guy than a me guy in those regards. <laughs> yes, that is true. That I, I will I will say Mitch Garver's a me guy for sure. Yeah, um, me, I don't run out and go and draft M Mitch Garver because it's just one of those things where I'm like, okay, you know, will he play every day is just always the question uh, being that. You know, since they, I don't think they really want him to catch all that much because of, you know, Cal. Um, and they're going to want to rest other players he might be platooning and sitting out. So we shall see. But definitely worth the shot, especially with the spring training um, performance. We got about, what, two minutes left, Dom? So yeah, uh, we got we got another minute or so. Uh, I don't know if you got another guy, anything you want to throw out there for the people, or I mean, you can just call it. We can wrap early if you want. Yeah, you know what? I'll just leave it like this. If you, there wasn't somebody that we've talked about a lot that you wanted to hear a little bit more about, um, you know, it's probably coming on our My Guys episode at the end of the week uh, where we go, we talk about guys that we're drafting, you know, not leaving the draft without. So, you know, I want to see that episode. And lastly, um, yeah, let's just hope and pray that uh, Yuri Perez is okay. Oh, but, <laughs> um, yeah, guys, and, and this is the biggest draft weekend coming up. So, you know, just join us on subtext. The link is in the wherever you listen. If uh, it's in YouTube, you know, any social media platform, check right us out. In bio. On subtext. Get, yeah, in bio, just give us give us the chance on subtext and we'll answer all your questions. We're giving out draft grades. I know you draft this weekend. You want a grade? You want some deep dives on it? Hit us up on the subtext. But guys, until our next episode, uh, thank you for listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Thank you to our everydayers and new listeners making Lockdown Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. So guys, until next time. Peace. See you.